Chris. Marcus. We are back. It is a little pocket awareness. You guys already know what to do. Follow us on Twitter at ALPA underscore QB1. Also on Instagram, same thing, ALPA underscore QB1. Also on um, Facebook, a little pocket awareness on Facebook. Also check it out. Check us out for audio. Got the audio too, guys. Go ahead, check that out for on uh what, what, what am I thinking of, Chris? iTunes, Spotify, Spotify, iTunes. Google yeah. Play. Yeah, yeah. All that good stuff. Uh, appreciate the love that we get on the on the YouTube channel. Uh definitely. I know you guys are agreeing with Chris on the uh Baker Mayfield being inside the 20, but that's fine. That's fine. You guys <laughs> turned on me already. That's fine. You guys turn on me inside of with Chris. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. He, he, he's he, you know, I like Chris, it's okay. You could do that. Uh, <laughs> but we're back, Chris. We're back this week. We're going to finish up our countdown. Uh, 10 through 1. Uh, is and, and I, I, You know, I don't know if I got too many surprises for you this time, Chris. I, I think you uh, – I have a feeling that we'll be okay here. You might you might have Josh Allen a little higher than I than I would have him, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. You're de- definitely a Josh Allen hater over here. That's say Chris is. Chris. I, I, I'm a re- Josh Allen realist. Don't, I'm not a hater. He's good. He deserves to be in this top 10. That's for sure. All right, all right, all right, Chris. All right, so first thing first, you know, we talk about our teams a little bit. So Raiders uh, quarterback battles off to heated start. Um, it, it's it's basically film watchers versus amateurs, in my opinion. But you know, no, no. <laughs> I need to stop. I'm bad. I need to stop, Chris. See, this this on the show, I'm just I'm relentless. But it's it's true, man. I mean, if you're a Gardner Minshew fan, you're just not a film watcher, and then you <laughs> you're like MC in this battle. You're, you you are. That's just basically how I feel like it uh, okay. when I watch it. Because, you know, Minshew was just running out of pockets. So he's going to really Gardner Minshew, I guess, you know. Gardner's going to Gardner. Gardner's going to Gardner, right? AOC looked like he was like, oh, all right, man, you got some control over here. He was going through reads and stuff. I was like, okay, man. First time running the offense. But then he had, like, one sack. He got sacked, and, you know, Raiders fans freaked out. He can't move. It was like it was just like a – it was like a – it was all because Brock Bowers ran the wrong route. Spot concept. Like, Bowers, run the corner, bro. Like, what are you doing? You look lost out there. Young, Brock, Brock, young, lost. Young, uh, young kid's going to learn. Yeah, man. Had a, lot of, had a lot of success in college. Welcome to the NFL, rookie. Yeah, because they got him playing fullback. He had no idea what he was doing. He was like – he was like he was like trying to find a guy to block. He was like <laughs> – Oh, boy. Yeah, it's gonna be a learning curve for that young man. <laughs> a little bit, bro. When you mess up the spot concept, I, you know, I, I feel like that's that's running high school a little bit. I feel like that's like a little bit of a high school to college concept as a spot. Like, you know, I, I feel like most people know what that is. You know, just I guess so <laughs> are they gonna play him a lot as like an H back, or are they gonna? Are you guys gonna be an eleven all all day long? <laughs> Doc, they had uh, so they did fifteen snaps in the first drive. Michael Mayer and Brock Myers on the field together on twelve of them. That that's how it should be. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what they're doing. Who's your Who's your number two wide receiver? Jacoby Myers. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's he's a decent number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty good, man. He's, he, yeah, he he had a he had a good game um, in the preseason game. So I think him, Adams, Bowers, uh, <clears throat> Michael Mayer. I think those would be the top four targets. The oh, absolutely. Season. There's no reason you stay in that eleven personnel, and you can you can split Brock out. Yeah. Heck, you can even split Mayer out, have mm-hmm. two two and two on each side. Could you imagine having both those tight ends on the same side, and you just you just throw a quick one to Devontae? Yeah, get those blockers out in front of them. Yeah, I think there's, it's, a, it's, there's a lot of creativity that you, that you can have there offensively. So ho- hopefully, Getsy plays to it with the the athletic personnel that you have with those big bodies that can that can be quick out there. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> Now, for you, Jordan Love, he, he faced cover zero for the first time in his life and threw a touchdown. Uh, <laughs> was it cover zero or was, it, was it? Bro, where was the safety? What, was it cover one? So he came up hard. He, there was a crossing route, and the safety came up hard on that one. And then you had the slot fade right there, and just homie put it on the money. Yeah. And Did he play after that? It's, it's a Super Bowl year after uh, after this for us now. He makes one throw, and everybody's like, okay, pack it in, Super Bowl. <laughs> did he play after that, or is, did he see? I think they just played the one drive just to, just to get them out there. And get he, the played minutes, huh? he played two I, minutes, huh? He played two minutes. I think he got – listen, I, I'm good with that for, for the first week. He can play He can play two drives next week. Maybe give him a quarter in week three, maybe. Yeah. 
We'll see. Warm, warm him up. He looked good. I, I, that was that was. Uh, I'm a happy camper with what I saw. That's for sure. It was a great throw. It was a great throw. There. Uh, I saw, did I? I you of course you texted that to me. You had mm. to send it to me, and and then I responded back with a flashback to 15 years ago and, and a young Mr. Aaron Rodgers preseason game against the well they they played the same team it was the Browns that that time too huh mm-hmm. and he threw yeah. a nice little deep ball as well so uh, any any opportunity to compare those two and and to to see them do similar things I will take it and uh I'll, I'll take this to the bank if we can get there yeah uh yeah all right, I, th- I think that that's going to be pretty nice for Jordan Love. Uh, any other standouts? So, you know, JJ McCarthy got hurt. He's out. Yeah, for- McCarthy was a he meniscus, looked- I think. Yeah, he looked pretty good, though. Against well, that's, the Raiders, that's what everybody was saying. He looked everybody pretty good. He looked pretty good. Sorry, well, sorry. Guess what? He ain't going to look anything for the rest of the year. It's Sam Darnold's offense. You think so? I mean, Kevin O'Connell was, it was cooking, man. He did this one concept where he had the, the wide receivers bunched up together. And they both did slow releases, so like it confused the corners. And like one did like a, a over route, the other one did a, a, a quick drag. Bro, I was like, "You're a genius. Who are you? Are you? <laughs> this is preseason, bro. Relax, bro. Like, what is this? <laughs> Relax. <laughs> yeah, he had the, uh, the the Raiders two rookie corners just confused. They're like, "What the hell? Yeah, bro. You ain't you ain't see that in the NFL. You ain't see that in the SEC. I'll tell you that." He was cooking, man. I was like, you need to relax, bro. This is free season. <laughs> I don't know. You should not have supposed to put that on film yet, bro. I don't right. know. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Now it's out there. Now it's on now it's on the film. <laughs> Trying to make JJ comfortable though. He's, he, I mean, that dude was wide open, bro. Like it was it was crazy how he set that up. I was like, man, that dude is Kevin O'Connell was cooking. And yeah, he's damn good, man. So I think if JJ does play, I think Sam Darnold's gonna be all right. I think Darnold's gonna He'll be okay. Be okay? Uh, you know, I think course. I I think getting he as long as he doesn't hurt himself. Yeah. As long as he can stay healthy, I think he'll be serviceable. But hey, I'm a happy camper. You were gonna give me a rookie quarterback or Sam Darnold as a starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. I'll take that. Yeah. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> that was your iPad. We get a little graphic here. I hit you with the thumbs up and we get we get some we're gonna do it again. Yeah, no, no. I don't know how you did that, Chris. That was, that was, I don't uh, know how I did it either, but that was, that, was good, that was good timing. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, uh, other rookies, I mean, uh, Joe Milton sold the show. Joe Milton. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not playing this game with you this year. I'm not doing presence. it. I'm Translate. telling you. I'm telling you. Here, here's what translates. <laughs> Preseason football against twos and threes, okay? We're going to pump the brakes. We're gonna wait till stuff happens in the regular season. That's what we're gonna wait for. Pocket presence translates, Chris. It translates, and then you have some. I, I will not disagree presence. with you. I will not disagree with you that that is a transferable skill that is necessary in the NFL. Mm-hmm. But I'm 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 clearly being very sarcastic when I talk about Jordan Love throwing one pass and he's yeah. gonna take us to the Super Bowl. Like it's the preseason, okay? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he abused somebody that is just trying to make a team. So let's let's just. Let's continue to – it's preseason, pump the brakes. Yeah, yeah, preseason is the king pump the brakes because that's where Danny Dimes made his <laughs> – Danny gonna, Dimes. They're going to start some rookie who has no business starting because of the work that he did in the preseason, and it's going to it's gonna ruin him for the rest of his career. I don't know. Pete Carroll was right, man, when he went with Russell Wilson over Matt Flynn. He was right. He didn't do it because of the preseason work. It wasn't that wasn't the determining factor? All right, let's. I'm sure it's practice. Break. I'm pump sure it's break. practice and stuff like that. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, but uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I mean, Caleb looked pretty good too. Caleb, Caleb looked all right. His first start had had some good throws. Had, he has some uh, some good uh, pocket feel. Uh, I thought yeah. he looked pretty good. He looked, he looked competent. Comfortable. Competent quarterback play in Chicago makes people go absolutely insane. Dog, if he doesn't throw four thousand yards with those guys, I don't know. Chicago's cursed. That's what I've been saying that he should hit four thousand. Uh, Chicago's a cursed city. He doesn't hit four thousand with those weapons. They got Cole, some pretty, pretty Cole Kemet, Keenan pretty Allen, cool. Keenan Moore. I, yeah. Then the rookie Rome. Yeah, they got they got they got some special they got some specialty players over there. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, I'm trying to, what other rookies? Uh, Jay Daniels threw two passes and and one of them <laughs> looked good. Yeah, one of them looked really good. And then, yeah, his first yeah. pass looked really good. Yeah, and he changed the play, so he hates Cliff already. So Cliff probably called, Cliff, I guess, <laughs> called a screen, and he, he changed it to all ghosts. <laughs> you would call a screen, bro. Like, why you call it a screen on third and six, bro? <laughs> That's why I didn't want Cliff because he's already Jay Daniels is already going rogue in the preseason. He's called an audible. <laughs> then Cliff's just like, "Oh yeah, great job! You saw what you saw. You know, yeah, good job, kid. Great, great job, Jay. Great job. Great job." And then before the snap, he's like, "He's doing what? <laughs> What's he changing my play for?" Oh uh, man, so. He's already, uh, you know, trying to get Cliff Kingsbury fired over there. He's already uh, going defiant, so that's pretty cool. And then uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, the rookies. Who else played? I mean, Drake May <laughs> handed the ball off. They brought him in for a, a, a drive. He was just like, hey, yeah, get, get used to it. Game speed. Let's go. Get out there. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. <laughs> and then I guess Gerard, I guess they got in a fight today, the Patriots. Do you, do you, already, you already said <laughs> moving forward? If a starter wants to get into a fight, you're playing the entire preseason game. If yeah. you're not a starter and you get into a fight, you're not playing any of the preseason game. So they said Drake Mays should get in a fight like right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, Bo Nix uh, looked all right, but, you know, Bo, Bo, that's a film watcher's first uh, broadcaster. I'm not going to say amateurs. I'm sorry, guys. Bro- first broadcast watcher. Um, because I, I guess his film was off. I haven't watched it yet, but I, I watched mm-hmm. some of those guys' film. But I guess his film was just him like running into pressure and stuff like that. And so, oh boy, yeah, <laughs> looking like Bo Nix from Alabama, from Auburn, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Le- that that's still I can't get over the fact that dude was a legacy at Auburn and left the mm-hmm. SEC. Yeah, because he thought that he would do better outside of the most pro ready conference in the, in college. And he was right. He was right. He still got drafted twelve. He still got drafted twelve. Yeah. Well, see what would have happened if he would have. We'll never see what would have happened had he would had he would have stayed with Auburn. That's for sure. Yeah, because I mean, there's really nothing else to talk about preseason. I mean, CJ Stroud came in and it, it, it threw a touchdown his first drive, like on a, a ball he threw like five seconds before T. Dicktail came out of his break, perfectly put on his plate, so and, 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 and step on Diggs on the sideline, telling him how he runs the route. Right. Like, so when I run that route, I do a little shake though, so you can't throw it that early because I shake a little bit. You know? <laughs> I was doing my lip reading. I was practicing my lip reading. Chris. I shake a little bit before I break out. Tank, he just comes right out the break. I shake. So if I shake a little bit, you got You can't do that type of timing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Stephon Diggs has to make sure he gets the ball first. So sure, sure. Yeah, you know, one one pass to somebody else. He's <laughs> having a conversation with CJ. He, it wasn't a bad conversation. He's just telling no, no, CJ he, how he yeah. runs the route. We gotta talk. Yeah, we just make sure we're on the same page. I do a little more of a shake. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Let's get into this because we're gonna we're gonna. We're gonna to need to, to focus for this top ten here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, that conversation was hilarious. That, that I was. Can totally, I can was totally tell us what he was saying. He was like, "Yeah, I love that throw because he's like pointing at TikToks. I love it, but I do this." <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, guys. All right, so we're getting the countdown. Countdown. All right, so, uh, yeah, the finale. So we did uh, twenty through eleven last week, which was uh, Wilson, Derek Carr. Geno Smith, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, Tua, Lawrence, Cousins, Love, Goff. All right. So. Matthew Stafford at, at that 10 spot like he always no, has no, been? No, 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 no. Stafford's not at 10. <laughs> oh, wow. You, 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 you're going to like this list. I already tell. Okay. All right. So I, I got uh, Brock Purdy at 10. So I got Brock Purdy at 10. I think that's um, deserved. Uh, you know, Purdy gets a lot of hate, right? I think he gets a lot of hate, but he, yeah. he is pretty damn good at quarterback, to be honest. Like, I think he he runs Kyle Shanahan's offense really well. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not Jimmy Garoppolo. He's getting through. He's getting through all the reads. If he has a time, he's getting to that fifth one. He knows where everywhere to go with the football. He anticipates really well. I think he has pretty good pocket feel too. He's good feel on the pocket. Yeah. Good yes, throws under pressure. The offensive line was not good last year. Besides Trent Williams, I know uh, it wasn't, but you know, he, he made some plays. You know, when the line was breaking down, he has a throw against the Jaguars where, like, 
he should, he's because he's like six foot six one, and I feel like like the line collapsed around him, and I don't know how he saw this, but he found some way to just like throw it up in the air, and it landed right into like George Kittle. <laughs> he ran for seventy yards. It was a crazy throw, um, and you know, and, and you know, like I said, he anticipates really well. He has a great uh, job of you know throwing digs over the middle. Um, you know, he doesn't have a huge arm, but I, I think he does it good enough and has good timing to to get rid of that ball on time. And I, I just thought his film was impressive because, you know, he's one of those guys, too. Like, if nothing's there, he's going to throw to McCaffrey mm-hmm. and you know, McCaffrey's going to make some plays for him. And I know Shanahan ha- has a lot of cool stuff that gives him easy reads, easy looks, easy things for him to go through. But I still think that his film is pretty impressive. But, you know, I, I think if he continues to get better, I think he has a chance to become like, you know, notified as a really good quarterback because i still think they stole the mvp from him i'm give it, i still think they wow. we, we, didn't give, we didn't give him the mvp i mean he had the numbers and he has the film but we didn't give him an mvp because he's brock purdy playing with kyle shanahan like oh yeah sorry kyle and, and kyle you can't give a seventh round guy this early an mvp oh you can't do it you know you know you, you, you know because it's just the numbers that he put up and you know over four thousand yards i believe yeah over four thousand um over 30 touchdowns uh less than 10 interceptions uh he's like had the in epa little if you go to some nerdy stats he was like he was like at 29 the next guy's at 12. like he, he was efficient right and he mm-hmm. really did the job with kyle shanahan and i think he was he was pretty flawless throughout the season i think the, his worst game was the ravens game which we all watched which when he lost the mvp was that game yeah. that was this game in the regular season yeah okay so now Let's get into it here. So with Purdy, though, my whole problem with Purdy is that in the playoffs, he just wasn't – he just seemed like a – I don't want to say this. I don't know if he was just trying too hard, but he, he just like – it's basically like he forgot how he played in the regular season and when he was like trying to do too much. Like in the regular season, if, if nothing was there, he just throw it to McCaffrey, get a nice check down, get a nice little – McCaffrey go 15 or something like that, you know, make a guy miss, go 15, right? Or uh, he has his play as the Cardinals where – that he probably could have went to Debo Samuel on the play, but you get McCaffrey one on one against a linebacker on a choice route. You're going because McCaffrey goes touchdown, right? But he gets this, he got the Super Bowl, right? And like he's like forcing the ball downfield. He's ignoring checkdowns. Uh, it was like he was trying to beat Patrick Mahomes, like he was out trying to outplay him, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it really hurt his team. And I don't think he played really well in the playoffs. So. It, it, it's gonna with him the dynamic to me is gonna be how he plays going forward in the playoffs. I, I think that he has a lot of good elements to him. I mean, of course, there's some things that you know he's not very good at. Like you know, he's not gonna be able to throw the ball 80 yards downfield or anything like that. But I think you know, Brandon Ayuk still had like 76 catches and 1300 yards, so he had a lot of explosive plays still. Um, but most of that was like hitting him be at perfect timing on a dig route, kind of uh, you know, those type of things. So you're not gonna get those, you know, super deep passes that you're gonna you're gonna get from Brock Purdy. But I think he's very efficient. He's gonna get the ball out of his hands. It's just he's gotta play that way in the playoffs. So he, he can't just he, I'm playing Jordan Love, I gotta be Superman now. Like that's not gonna work, bro. You got Christian McCaffrey. You know, saying do the play the same way you always play. Like, you know, there's play against the Eagles where he has like a 40 yard pass to George Kittle. It's just a dump off that he goes through his reads and he just dumps it off George Kittle. And nobody's around him. Like, but in in the play, playoffs, he wasn't doing that. He, he, I guess he, I don't know. Maybe he was just taking he's offense. Too amped up. Something, or he's trying to prove something to somebody. Yeah, I hope no, that, like that could issue. definitely be the case. Yeah, like like I, I'm not. You know, he, he definitely sounds like he's a chip on the shoulder this year, but. Yeah, you just need to play his game, bro. Your game is is run the offense. Be a field general. Don't try to do too much. You got a good coordinator who's gonna set up your wide receivers to get open. <clears throat> you know, Brandon Ayuk, you, you know, had a lot of easy looks that you know uh Purdy was had the great timing on it and was able to uh, take advantage of it. You could tell he works with Ayuk a lot. That's why I think it's dumb to trade him because him and Ayuk he has good timing with the way Ayuk runs routes, which I mm-hmm. think when you have like a – we were just talking about Stephon Diggs. We are making jokes about Stephon Diggs. But that's why Diggs was telling him that because you're going to have to wait a little bit to get rid of that ball when the guy's a little unorthodox, right? So and I, I think he has that down with Brandon Ayuk too, because Brandon Ayuk would do, he'd be in the mix of a of a longer rocker step that he probably should be doing. And then he would get out of the break, but the ball's already right to him because Purdy had that timing with him. And I don't know if Purdy has that timing with anybody else. Um, but you uh, better figure it out. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So he's going to have to figure that out and try to see what's going on there with that. 
But uh, yeah, I, I think Purdy has. Uh, I think he's gonna be a top ten quarterback for a while in that offense. Uh, I no agree matter with you. Over there, right? As long as you guys are you. You got some good guys. Um, you know, uh, Gil- Gilbert Ricky is over there. Um, you know, Gilbert Goon Ricky uh, Purcell is over there. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> gonna be there. interesting to see how he plays. And he's hurt though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's hurt already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, uh, Brock Purdy, like, if he stays within the offense, he learned and put the time in in college. Was a redshirt senior quarterback at uh, Iowa State. Mm. The dude knows how to run an offense. The dude's comfortable in the pocket. Uh, As long as the pressure doesn't get to him right away, he has that ability to just work through. He can read a defense. I don't think Tua can read that well, other than that first read. I don't think uh, Jalen Hurts can read all that well. You know, stuff that happens for those guys early in the in the in the play, so that they can have success. The longer that those guys hold on to the football, the more trouble they are in, and that's why they're that mid fifteen ranking. Brock Purdy gets to be in the top ten because he reads the whole field. He gets through the yeah. entire progression. He hangs in the pocket and he'll look through everything and then check it down. He he does it the right way, and that's why I totally agree with you that he deserves to be in the top ten, and, and he will be in the top ten for a while. His his biggest weakness is dealing with pressure. When it comes quickly, he kind of – I don't know if he kind of just loses his train of thought when it comes right away. He doesn't have the escapability like some of these other guys. Yeah. So uh, there's something about uh, – it feels like there's a panic there, but there shouldn't be with how yeah. well he does everything else. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 a little bit of a panic there, uh, but I, I still think he handles it pretty well. Uh, I mean, and he, he is a little underrated uh, uh, making plays with uh, kind of just that second sure. that second reaction play. He sure. is a little underrated there, but I, I just think, like, overall, yeah, I, I, I see him kind of being steady, like, in this area for a while, especially with the coach that he has. As long well, as the coach that he has, and as long as they continue to, de- to develop the talent around him to where he's got multiple options. Like, you, you he's got two – Stud wide receivers, a stud tight end, and the best running back, like, and the best left tackle. Like, yeah, they surrounded him with the amount of talent that he needs to be successful. So, as long as they can keep that talent around him and he doesn't have to put everything on his own shoulders, he'll definitely remain in the top 10. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So, that's uh, Brock Purdy. Uh, so let's get to number nine. Number nine is uh cj stroud i got cj stroud at number nine now you got him at nine but you got jordan love (laughs) outside the top 10. see see the thing is things cj stroud is i probably if he wasn't a rookie and we keep our rules because i kept the rules here that's why i got him at nine to be honest i think that he played pretty damn well yeah he played phenomenal he played phenomenal and uh the stats are second to jordan loves but Continue. I mean, I mean, he was more on a running offense than Jordan Love. I mean, he was more like you know, he uh, he was twenty three touchdowns, five interceptions, right? Less passing attempts, but when he had to and had to pass the ball, he was he was fantastic. Like he had those yeah. two forty yard games back to back. He still threw four thousand yards, had a really high YPA, it was great deep passing. I mean, I thought he, I mean, he was on the money on his deep passes. Uh, his game in the playoffs against the Browns was fantastic that dude was just going off um i i thought he's he's just so he so, was so consistent down to down too it was, it was like it, it like it was like he was already a second year player or mm-hmm. even like a third year player that it, it felt mm-hmm. like and he's still so young he's only 21 years old probably i think he's maybe maybe turned 22 during the season probably turned 23 this year he's still so young um and I, I thought that he, you know, threw the ball in the middle of the field really well, did a good job participating in the middle of the field, which you saw on film at Ohio State. He did a good job doing that at Ohio State, too. Um, and, you know, it, and it's the, the whole, like, mobility thing, too, I think it's overrated because he didn't need to do that because, I no. mean, he was also smart with the football. Like, he would, um, for the most part, uh, he would check down when he needed to. I think sometimes that he would still try to force it downfield a little bit. <clears throat> and that, like, affected his completion percentage. I, I think that he would take chances, like instead of just like checking it down, 
he instead of getting sacked, he was just like throw it downfield and you know where only his guy could get it, but then nobody else could get it. Mm-hmm. And, but it would be like an overthrow pass, so that's why he has like this. He has like a weird accuracy percentage that's pretty low. When I think he's more accurate than it actually says, because it's more because uh, you know people don't know how pocket passes work for the most part, in my opinion. And I, I think I think we're <laughs> I don't, no, I'm being serious because I, I think <laughs> there is a there is a very strategic advantage to throwing an incompletion sometimes. Yeah, right. It and truly is. And it might mess up your, your accuracy percentage might be really low. You're like, oh, that guy's not accurate. Look, here's my accuracy percentage. You know what I'm saying? Like I charted. I didn't like that throw. But like it's more about like uh sometimes the pocket pass just to get rid of the football. He's not gonna try to like live, make a play live for the time. next day. Live for yeah, the next right? day. Right. Mm-hmm. If I just get rid of the ball here, it's still second and ten or whatever. I'm not losing yards, I'm not taking a sack. Um and, and he, field goal range. I can't take a sack here. I got another down to play with. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so like a, you might watch him, like he's about to get pressure and he might just throw the ball. It might sail over Tank Dell's head or like whoever, or Nico Collins or somebody that like that. And it's like, oh, that's inaccurate. But I'm watching it. And I'm like, oh, he's just giving the football. Like, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's oh, that, absolutely. That's, yeah. Absolutely. That makes, that makes absolutely a lot of sense because it sometimes is necessary. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it is necessary to do that. And I, th- I thought he did a good job of, like I said, not losing that's how, the that's how you know you got a good you got a good quarterback because we're utilizing an incompletion instead of the incompletion happens because you're just inaccurate. Like yeah. th- those are two completely different things. Yeah, because his completion percentage is low. It wasn't high, and, and, and a, a lot of it to me was he was was the run downfield a lot, which you know that's going to lower your completion percentage. But a lot of it was him being a pocket passer, and you know when you think about it, like the completion percentages have gotten higher. You know, because a lot of these screens and guys throwing short passes, but there's not a lot of guys who are pure pocket passers who are just giving her the ball just to get rid of it, like you know, like Peyton Manning would or something like that, or like mm-hmm. Brady to just get rid of the ball. Drew and, Brees. Yeah, those type of guys. And you know, even with the accuracy charting with Brady at the, and like even Aaron Rodgers and those guys end the careers are higher, right? And when you think about it, that's how Stroud played is I'm getting rid of the ball. So it might oh, that's inaccurate when I'm charting it, but is it really inaccurate? So that was my thing when watching CJ Stroud. I thought he was pretty damn good, right? And and, and if he wasn't a rookie and we didn't have our rules, Chris, I might have put him in five five. I, I almost did. I thought about it. Okay. I did. I thought I'll, about it. I'll put I'll follow this away, man. You got Jordan Love outside the top ten, and you want to put you want to put this kid. <laughs> he played in the better. Top five. He was better, Chris. I'm sorry. He was. He played okay. better. F- right. From he played good the whole season. He didn't even have a, a, a historic nine, ten week run. Historic, but not historic enough to be in your top ten. Okay, all right, go to eight. Go to eight. I didn't get to. I didn't get to. My, what was wrong with CJ Stroud? Oh, okay, to, okay, okay. You just you, you just want me to keep moving. I'm in. I'm in my oh, feelings. I see. I'm in my feelings <laughs> right there. You keeping Jordan Love out of the top ten? I'm. I'm in my feelings. So, uh, yeah, I, I went with. Uh, so my, what I think of CJ Stroud, which I thought in college is, I think still think he struggles with pressure, and hmm. I think that is something that people aren't gonna notice that much because he, he has like t- he has Tunstall and Titus Howard you know what I mean like <laughs> those are good tackles those are pretty damn good tackles you know what I'm saying and like the Jets game like when I think Tunstall I think Tunstall might have been out of that game he was just getting just bullied and he like had under 50 percent passing and you know the, the Bucks game too when they're getting after him early in that game um, he didn't look too good because he's under pressure a lot. I still think pressure is a little bit of an issue for him. So, um, but but I I think he ha- he like he handles it better than Jared Goff. But I still it's something that like it could be key. Like I mean, you don't want to blitz him though. Like he's a typical guy. Like if I can get pressure with four, then there's trouble. Then there's going to be trouble. Like I don't know if I want to blitz him eight hundred times because he's so smart that he's going to pick you apart if you blitz him. He's going to know where to go with the football. He's going to know where his hot route is. He's going to mm-hmm. know. Uh, oh, or or maybe if you're blitzing me, I can maybe the reads should be here, but this guy's gonna be one on one. I'm gonna go here instead. Like he, he's that type of guy. So, but if you get pressure on him with four, yeah, he, he he's gonna struggle a little bit. They, like that's what I'm saying. He's a, he's a classic pocket passer. Like you get pressure with four, is how you beat him. And and um, I still think that's a little bit of an element that he's gotta get better at. It. Maybe he won't ever get better at that, but it, it's 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 how you beat him. Is you got you have to get pressure with four. If, you, if you're trying to send six, you will get picked apart. I'll mm-hmm. tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. But if you, if, you, if you do like the Jets or the Bucks, and they're getting, I mean, the Bucks were sending some blitzes, but he was able to burn them when they did that. But when they got pressure with four, it was a little different. So, yeah. Um, 
and I and I also hope that they, they don't try to get to the forty passes a game with him because he was a little bit controlled in like a, a, a run first offense last year. A lot of play action, a lot of uh, you know keeping him under thirty passes. And I think that I, I and I know that they got Stephon Diggs and they got Nico Collins and they got Tank Dell. And it's gonna be a temptation to do that, but I still think he's twenty three and I think they need to calm it down a little bit mm-hmm. until he's like into the 25 26 and then we can get to that yeah and, let, and him, I, let him progress let him let him get comfortable let him progress uh yeah. you know i might be messing around but <laughs> he was he was my number one out of the draft class so I, i'm very high on cj uh he does he 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 deserves to be in this spot yeah 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 and and, and that's what i'm saying I, I hope they don't like we're going to stop running the ball because there's a big thing on Twitter. Like, hopefully they stop running the ball in first down. I'm like, bro, that was effective for him though. It mm-hmm. helped him out, mm-hmm. kept him comfortable, it kept team steady and allowed him to give him easier looks because teams are going to try to stop, try to stop him. Now they get, he got digs and if they can keep running the ball, it's going to keep teams a little too high and, and, and allow him to work a little bit. So, um, yeah, yeah, man. But I feel bad for Nico Collins because Nico Collins would have had a chance to be like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> 1600 yeah, yard he, guy. He's he's the third option now. <laughs> he went from first to third, bro. Uh huh. Because <laughs> right. Diggs already decided this is hot. He's, Diggs, he's already in the ear. He's already in his ear. Oh, yeah. It's over, bro. Yeah. Nico, it's over. You're not getting any more targets. You're, you're good. All right. Eight. Nope. Number eight. Uh, my uh, the most hated quarterback I hate the most is Justin Herbert. I want Justin Herbert at eight here. <sighs> Gotta hate this guy. I, just, I have a disdain for him. Every time, it, it's a hate watch for me every time because it, it's just like, well, this is this is the year where we're, we got to keep an eye on him because that but he's hurt now. Oh, yeah. he, he's that's, that's, hurt. A lot, that's a lot of talent that left in the off season. That's <laughs> a lot they, of talent that left in the off season. They got rid of Keenan Allen, man. I don't understand. Jim Harbaugh is a crazy man, like for for Gus Edwards. <laughs> they got rid of Keenan Allen. They got rid of Austin Eckler. Yeah. Uh, is it Mike Williams gone too? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, they're all gone. Uh, what? Those are your three top producers. And he's hurt. And he has plantar uh <laughs> plantar fasciitis. Yes. Uh this is this is the year that we're gonna find out what, what type of quarterback this young man is. Yeah, I mean to be because think with Herbert, Herbert just has good pocket presence. I, I think he seems to feel really well. Um, you know, it's good pocket presence. He knows when to leave. He knows when to run. He knows when to stay. He he has he's good pocket mobility too. That's what I really hate about him the most is that he's uh, <laughs> is that you know he, he does those old school things where he like he like slides in the pocket and like move his arms and he's so strong there too. Like he'll have like four guys grabbing on him and still throw the football as hard as he can. He step through it. Yeah. He can step through it and you know uh, <laughs> and, and and he's pretty accurate when he needs to be. Um, uh, but you know, it, it's just a hate watch for me every time. I just, I just, hate, I hate watching the guy. I do, but you know, he, 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 does, he definitely has a lot of things that I like and it's hard to keep him out of the top 10 as much as I really want to, as, as much as I just want to find something to keep him out of this area. But we talked about this, I think what, a couple of years ago that he's going to be eight or seven for like his whole career. It's not, I don't think he's ever going to get past the spot. We, we talked about this. We did. He's going to be did. right here. We did. <laughs> he's gonna we be right did. here. Well, <laughs> he's, I he's mean, this effort. He's like, I, this is a huge hashtag we'll see. Huge hashtag we'll see for him this season. Just because that's that's a lot of missing pieces. With Greg Roman. That's a <laughs> lot of missing pieces. You're, you're forgetting they hired Greg Roman, Chris. Uh, and, I, and, and I, they, I didn't forget I didn't forget anything. I know this is not this is a this is a potential problem for him. This is a potential problem. The Chargers are going to charge. That's the thing. That's that's my favorite thing about him is on the Chargers. So I watched this quarterback who has all this potential. I only say potential. I think he's, he actually is a really good quarterback. He's it's just see, he's on the Chargers. I, I will say that I don't think he anticipates as good as the other quarterbacks that I had around him. Um, I don't think that he does that. I, they're, they're, he doesn't anticipate. Is it, right. is it because is it because he just doesn't like? There's nobody. He doesn't have the timing down with anybody. Those guys miss so much time the last few the years point. that he can't get on the same page with them to to make those anticipatory throws. Yeah, you, you might have a good point there because you know Keenan Allen. He did. He was able. To he missed a lot of games. Him. Yeah, Mike Williams missed a lot of games. Yeah. So I mean, you have a point there. Yeah, you do have a point that maybe that he's uh he's a little bit. You know, with that, but you know, I think sometimes it's like you know, when you have a big arm like that, I think sometimes some of those guys are just late, like 
when they don't need to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he, he can make he still can make some crazy throws. I I, I just think that uh, you know some of the anticipation. I, I do think he's a little bit of a Silva check down Charlie. Um, a little bit. I think that's his conservative. Well, man. Austin Eckler, you have somebody that you can be a check down Charlie to because of how much he can do with that ball once you get him in open space. Doesn't have it anymore. So no, this is going to be it. absolutely insane. And Gus Edwards just, he just turn around and hand the ball off to that guy. He's just going to barrel through. He's a bowling ball, man. I got to watch him with all, with all the games that I see here in in. Washington DC and, and Maryland and in Baltimore, like there's a lot of Ravens football on in this area. And I got to see Gus Edwards barrel through a lot of people. Yeah, the Ravens are Ravens fanatics. They're, they live, live and breathe the Ravens over there. So it makes sense. Uh but yeah, like yeah, he's still still a little bit of, of that in him, you know, all, all those things. But you know, it, it, it that's why you can beat him though, because I feel like you could dictate his game. I still feel like you could dictate where he goes with the football. Um, you could dictate where he where he's going to read because he's not going to test tight windows unless he's down seven with like three seconds or three minutes left. That's the only time he's going to start testing windows. Um, other than that, he's not really going to take a lot of chances. That's why he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. Um, um, he's, he's just not really a guy who's going to use his arm like you would think he would. Right. Um, so yeah, man, I, I, I just, I just didn't. Yeah. It's a hate watch for me. I just, I just don't like the guy. It's just something about him. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't like him. I don't like the guy. He's like the it's the quarterback. If I have a quarterback that I hate in the NFL, it's it's just a Herbert man. It's, it is, man. I just can't stand the guy. Every, every time I watch it, I do this summer film session. I just get I just, I just get angry. I get it. I get <laughs> it gets my blood boiling. Watch it like what? Him making a great throw. It's like you just I just hate you. So much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, you Every all right, let, let's let's move you off of Justin Herbert then. Let's let's calm you so, down. All right, so so now I, this is my default one because I didn't know where to put this guy, and you probably know where I'm gonna go look at this one. I had no idea what to put. I just put Aaron Rodgers at seven. I had no idea where to put Aaron Rodgers, and I feel like I had to list him because I'm not gonna list. I know some people like to do this; they like to put him at like at 14, but I'm a like, bro. You mean like uh, the top 100, and they put him at 94 or whatever? Yeah, yeah, but but even then, but but they, they but why was he on that list, right? People were mad that he was because he's Aaron Rodgers. That's why he's on that. <laughs> yeah. So I, didn't, I honestly I didn't know where to put him in, but I'm like, I know deep down in myself, if he plays a whole season with those guys, he's, he's gonna just, be a top ten guy. He just that's just who he is. He's, if he's you know, out there, he's gonna tear. He's gonna tear it up. It's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, right. He hasn't fallen off. You can see the camp like they, they, they drop an OTA because he's throwing no look passes. <laughs> you know, it's he's well, Aaron dude's gonna, Yeah, dude's gonna do what he wants to do. So that's my thing, and you know, and I think that you know the the, the vaccines and stuff like that has a lot of the media not liking him, and you know and him being, you know, super you know astrology spiritual guy and doing all that weird stuff, and you know, going into a a, a chamber in India for four days, all that stuff that you know that, that's why the, I think that's why people are putting him outside the top ten because you you guys got to keep it real, like, you know, because you want to think about like is when I'm looking at these guys, is Justin Herbert better than Rodgers? No, he's not. No. I don't think he's that. No. No, he's not. I just no. I couldn't do it. I, I can't. Yeah. I just can't lie to myself. He if he like, plays yeah. if he plays an entire season, he's right back in the top five, if not back in the top three. He's Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he's Aaron Rodgers. He's, he's at Aaron seven. Rodgers. He's at seven because he didn't play. He played three snaps last year. He's at seven. <laughs> what do you want me to do? He's he plays Aaron the whole, he plays the whole year. Then the conversation is what it always is. Patrick Holmes one, Aaron Rodgers two. <laughs> Oh, did I spoil did I spoil something for you? What you don't like? You don't like reality? You know what I'm saying? I do know I, what you're saying. Yeah, you know, because I, I just don't see him having a bad year with those guys. Now he's got Mike Williams too, so he's got Mike Williams, right? He's got Garrett Wilson, right? Um, you know, maybe the offensive line might be not be good, but I I feel like you know he, he's playing in he's, his, his he's, offense. He's played he's played with with offensive linemen that have struggled before. It's, it's not a new thing for him. Yeah, and he's playing his own offense. You know, Hackett's just there with a the clipboard. I mean, we saw <laughs> Hackett, what Hackett did without him. Now he's <laughs> Brian, if you guys if, if you guys struggle, you better believe that everybody in the world is going to be pushing for a trade to get Devontae into New York. If you guys are struggling and the Jets are in competition, 
at the trade deadline, you better believe that that's all that's anybody's going to talk about. They better give up Garrett Wilson then. That, it, to me, I, there's no trade with the Jets without Garrett Wilson. I want Garrett Wilson. I'm dead serious. I, I, I'm, I don't know what to tell you, man. Th- you this conversation will be happening. We, you, you want to take our best receiver? You're going to give us your younger best receiver. So we have oh, not to worry yeah. about it. We don't have to look in the draft and all that stuff. You got Garrett Wilson. You, you'll get you'll get two first round draft picks, and you will like it. And you will like it. No, no, no. They, it's they will Wilson. mortgage. They will mortgage that future. It's a first round draft pick and. Okay. All right. Let's go to six. Let's go to six. <laughs> we'll have this conver- we'll have this conversation when it's happening. Again. And Gary Wilson. That's, I'm just saying. Uh, that's 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 my. Uh, okay. If I'm a GM, I'm like, are you giving up Gary Wilson? And you're like, nope. Sorry, man. He's going to the Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna take on that IU contract. That, that's Forever. how you're gonna get IU back. That's how you're gonna get him back. Exactly, man. I gets traded and then he gets traded again. Just yeah, like okay. Tom Reddick over here. You know what I mean? Okay. Reddick must be traded twice. Oh. Or maybe send him to the Saints with Carr, man. You know, send him back. Send him oh, to okay. New All right. Now let's go to six for real this time. I'm not doing. I'm not playing that game with you. I'm not playing that. Game to the with Saints, you. bro. I'm not <laughs> playing that game. With you. Go to six. Well, go, to, go to six. Go to six. <laughs> All right, six. Uh, is Dak Prescott? I got Dak Prescott here at six. Uh. Mr. Regular season, Dak, Dak, Dak is on his uh, Peyton Manning uh, early career run right here. That's, that's what I – he's got his uh, – oh. he, he's on his early career. Because Dak is really good, Phil, man. D- Dak is everything that I would want in a quarterback. He's great in the pocket. He can make plays outside of the pocket a little bit. It's great pocket feel. He, he just – you know, he, he slides in the pocket. He does all these great things. He's a general. He's changing plays of the line. He's he's accurate. You know, he's doing all these things. He, 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 uh, he anticipates really well. Um, and you know, it just feels like he gets to the playoffs and he's just like, just, just the bet. I, don't know. <laughs> I think, I think he, he feels the weight of the Dallas Cowboy world and it crushes him. That's a good, that's a good point. I think it just, I think he just, he knows that he has to perform in the playoffs and he's just on edge. Like he came in, he took, he took the pressure. He played really well in the regular season. They're like, okay, we got our quarterback. Now you're the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, and now the way the world is on you. You got to do better than Tony Romo. You got to do better than than Troy Aikman. Like you, you gotta, you gotta do that. And I mean, same thing happened to Tony. Tony had his playoff struggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So and and, and that's the thing because I mean, Dak, Dak. Like I said, he he does so many things well, right? It's just so many things that you really like. You know, that's why I like guys like Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, they love watching Dak because he does all that super high level field general stuff. And he's definitely he's a steady, like top seven, top. I mean, some people are gonna have him top five. I mean, I I, I didn't want to put him there, but I I I just think he he has great film and he is just steady like i know what i'm gonna get i know i'm gonna have a big year from Dak prescott every year especially when I, I, if i have a guy that he can throw to you got brandon cooks you got uh some of those tight ends yeah. you got lamb, even though you know cd lamb is not gonna get paid even though you know jerry jones usually figures it out but he's got to pay michael parsons 40 million and he's got to get Dak 60 million Dude, i know this i don't know how they're gonna pay i don't know how they're gonna figure that out because that offensive line is not what it used to be they got some. They got some new young guys in there that have the potential to be what they need for an offensive line. They don't got to run. They 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 don't have anybody to turn the ball, turn around and give the ball to. And they can't run the ball. So that's, that's the thing. And I think that what really hurt him in the playoffs too is that you know in, during the regular season they got a, they got away with just Dak Prescott just picking people apart and you know and not being able to run the football or or and you know because who was a running back last year i mean tony pollard i don't know what team tony pollard is on right now i don't remember where he went either isn't he isn't he uh is he in washington split in time with eckler maybe i have no idea where he i don't remember i don't remember where tony pollard went that's so there it is i mean that that just says it all like we don't know where he is that's the kind of running back that they had in oh they got zeke back yeah they got <laughs> zeke back did you, did you see that clip where he he went through that arm tackle uh, machine and he came out of it? He's like, "Oh, my back! Oh, oh, yeah, oh. like thirty man. I, I hope Zeke is all the fame though, because I think he deserves it. But uh, um, uh, because they're not gonna let any other running backs in the Hall of Fame, I don't think. Besides like Christian McCaffrey, but I think Zeke, 
has has a resume for that. And I think he he was good for a long time, and he's worth the pick at four. People, that's people don't like him. You know, you don't pay a running back, but he got paid, and he still is getting thirteen hundred yards and and thirteen touchdowns a year. He still is effective in the pass game. He still could take a screen ninety yards. That dude's the best screen guy I've ever seen. Dump a screen to him for some reason. He just it turns to a kickoff. He takes a point ninety. He did it last year with the Patriots. <laughs> Not a screen. He was taking a ninety still. So um, I think he'd be effective that way. But I, I just think you know one thing I'll say about Dak. You know, because we always called him a nut. You know, every time we do this breakdown, I think he was really conservative last year. I thought he was didn't really take the chances. You know, the interceptions were in his ear. I guess the picks. He led the league interceptions, so it was like a big yeah. thing. And yeah, yeah. I, I got a big. I got a big problem with the way that he turned the ball over. So, so he he was really like reserved, and, but I like that so Dak Prescott. So that was the only thing that uh, hurt me a little bit that he was a little bit more reserved this year. He, he just wouldn't, you know. I, I love Dak trying to fit it, it trying to anticipate, <laughs> trying to anticipate and hit it right on a dig in between two linebackers running into each other. I miss that. I did miss that. Um, and I don't know, if, and I don't know if he's going to go back to that ever again though. Because no, I, I don't, I don't think we'll see that again. Yeah, he's, he he's got he's got. He is going to be – he's got to figure out how to get out of his head. Yeah. He's got to figure out how to get out of his head. Well, I think in the playoffs he needs to play like that, though. So maybe, like, I I, I feel like in the playoffs I think he's going well, to he did. Play. He threw an interception, and, and Jair – somebody got a hand on him. Otherwise, that was a pick six. Like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. He did it. He threw, he threw a pick six. He threw a pick six. But that wasn't, a, that wasn't like an aggressive throw. That was a stupid throw. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about aggressive smart throws here chris where it's like anticipated correctly that was a stupid throw see that's, that's the difference chris that's, that's what i'm talking about he just shits he just playoffs and he just shits the bed but yes, you know yes, i know a lot, of, a lot of Raiders fans do not want him and i and, and i don't understand why i know it's paying him 60 million is a lot and i get it and well, um, you know if there's a guy that could use a, a change of scenery yeah i know that's what I'm saying, and 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 what and what I tell Raiders fans is like, why can't he break through with a different team? You know what I mean? Like maybe it's the team around him, and maybe it's I think the, he could. I think he could. I think he would be able to finally get out of his head if he's out of Dallas. I yeah. think that pressure of of wearing the star, like it got to Tony, it's it's on him. He's yeah. got it. It's happening to him. That's why I don't ever want to see him be a sixty million dollar man, like. That's like you gave Daniel Jones forty. Now you're gonna give Dak sixty? What? I mean, Trevor Lawrence got fifty five, man. What you, what you, I know. I, listen, do, I'm still gonna be uh, amazed that he's gonna make sixty a year. Yeah, I'm still gonna be. You don't. You're gonna pay sixty a year. You can't make it out of the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you, man. I'm not gonna tell you. All at right, least let's, you, uh, at least you've got at least you've got the potential with these other guys. With Dak, you're getting the same thing. Unless he leaves yeah. Dallas, he's doing the same thing every year. I think so. I agree with you on that. All right. So number five, which I to, to me, I feel like he, this guy's number five just could be just because uh Josh Allen. No, it's not Josh Allen. Oh. It's not Josh. It's, it's uh it's Matthew Stafford. Oh, I almost forgot that you should, you haven't said Stafford's name yet. It's Matthew Stafford. And the reason why Matthew Stafford's five, and I, I was thinking about this, like, you know, Matthew Stafford would never be five in, like, 2016. No. But now he's five because he's Matthew better. Staff- Matthew Stafford <laughs> is what Jared Goff is. Matt- Goff was it, 10, right? You said Goff was Goff, 10? No, you're not going to say Oh, he was 11. Better. He was 11. He was 11. He's way better than Goff. He uh, is. Hold on. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but where Jared Goff is now, yeah, is where Matthew Stafford used to be. Mm-hmm. The only reason Matthew Stafford's not there anymore is because there's no more Tom Brady, there's no more Drew Brees, there's no more Eli Manning, there's no more Peyton Manning. Like you got to put him somewhere. Yeah, he's, Ryan he's, Phillip Rivers, right? Like he's he's just <laughs> he just happens to be there still. So if Jared Goff is still there, like he's gonna end up where where Matt Stafford is. He could he could stumble his way into a Super Bowl. I'd be right where Matthew Stafford is right now. That could happen. That could happen. <laughs> I, I swear it, it's like because because if you if you name those just those five guys, right? They're all in front of him, right? He's at 10 and 11, like, just like he always is. <laughs> those guys are gone, and he just like, he just moved right on up at the five. 
And that's only because Aaron Rodgers was hurt all last year. Yeah. So that's another guy that he just happens to jump in front of. Because, because I mean, Magic Stafford is Stafford, bro. He's Stafford gonna have, Stafford. He's going to have some nuts throws. I mean, there's some... <laughs> He is going to have two or three, three interception <laughs> games this year. It's going to happen. He's the dig king. He just said that. And I've never seen anybody throw a dig better than him. I, I, I don't know if I'll ever see it. Man, does he throw a dig. I mean, it, he has like this. This is one, one at, in, at the Lions where he just like he comes this uh, against, yeah, against the Lions and plus he goes, goes to his left, he comes right back to his right, he just drills it right into the cool. And the cool hasn't came out of his break yet, so he he was reading it that quick. And the cool hasn't came out of his break yet, he just drills it right into his chest. And I'm like, man, this dude is just nuts. And then he had, he got, he, had, he they were like getting their butts kicked by the Cowboys, and he still had some crazy throws in that game. Um, he had this one crazy throw on the sideline that you know, Stephon Gilmore ended up breaking up, but that was a nuts throw. And you know he just has he just has so many just crazy throws. And Loves to throw the no lookers. Yeah, he has the no lookers, and you know it's it's. It, it, I I think the way he played last year, and just maybe like I said, it's just maybe because the other guys are just not that high level like he is. I think he was just a, a step above. I mean, that's why he took a Rams team that wasn't really good to the playoffs last year. They got to the playoffs. That wasn't a really good Rams team. I mean, I mean, he has some good wide receivers, but the line was a little iffy. You know what I mean? Defense was a little iffy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It wasn't Running really game's a, a little iffy. You know, well, Ky- Kyron Williams, I guess, came on at the end of the year. He had a thousand yeah, but he was, he was up and down because he was hurt. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he came on to the end of the year, so I think that helped him out a lot. But I think Stafford is just – he's just steady at this time. Like, at this point, like, it's not really that many guys that are better than him, in my opinion. And that's why I think the Rams, the Rams could surprise the NFC West is going to be tough. The division, they could surprise just, just because, like I said, he is, he's te- <laughs> five these years. Are the, ago, these are the quarterbacks that we're at, we're at that point where these are the quarterbacks that, all right, get on my back. Let's go. We're going to, we're going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think Stafford could still lead a team like that. And I, I think that he just has some special throws and, and, you know, I think he only has one year left with the Rams. They, that sounds they right. Year. I think I think you're right. Now that if, right. if he is if it's Dak Prescott or Matthew Stafford for the Raiders, I'm going Stafford. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'll go Stafford. Um and yeah. I I think the Raiders would could win a lot of games with him. Um yeah, uh, that's what I would do. So if, if that happens, you know, um, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. I, I there was rumors that they, they were trying to trade him at the draft. Yep, yeah, yeah. Which which I think is, you know, I don't I don't know what the hell they're gonna do at quarterback then. <laughs> Because Stetson Bennett threw four picks yesterday. Yeah, so, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. We talk about pre- we talk about it's preseason. <laughs> you want to talk about a guy whose college success was all about the people that were around him? <laughs> Shit, man! The four, four and he used the first quarterback to throw four picks in a preseason game since 1999. Wow! Wow! You and Nathan Peterman look good in preseason, bro. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> okay, you got a Peterman reference in there. Time to go to four. Let's go to four. All right, all right. I'm sorry, guys. All right, let me let me gather myself. So four is Joe Burrow. Uh, Joe Burrow's at four. Um, I got Joe at four here. Now, Joe is is he's got to fix the injuries. Let's start there. He's get, he's been hurt like so. He's got hurt year one. He wasn't hurt year two. He played pretty well. Didn't he get hurt year three? I, I just know he's he's a – you want to talk about a slow start every single season. Yeah. Joe Burrow, he doesn't, like, turn on until week six. <laughs> Which is weird. I don't know. It's understand. really weird. But when he turns know. on, Chris, when he turns I on. I know. I know. That's the thing. <laughs> like, the, they started the last, like, three seasons, like, one and four or something like that. Like. I don't get it. And they had the bye week like in week six or something. Like, I don't understand like how he can start the year so bad. Is he just somebody that he needs to be out there for all these preseason games? But Maybe. he can't be out there because he's hurt all the time. Well, I, he, I don't he, get he it. Played, he well, played two series uh this first this first preseason game. He played two series. Uh did he? Yeah, he let a touchdown drive. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe they, got, they, maybe they do need to get him going. I think he like it, I mean it's obvious based off of the last few years. The, I've never seen a slower start for a quarterback, ever. Yeah, but he, he's just a damn stud, bro. Every time I watch him, I'm like, man, you're, you're a damn, you're a damn stud. Just pocket movement, just pristine. He just 
great feel. Like it's like if you're gonna sack him, it's hard. I, I think he's got over the, the I'm Russell Wilson thing, which I'm very happy about. He yeah. got over the I'm Russell he's Wilson. Not, thing. Yeah, he's not taking as many sacks as he was. Yeah, but the offensive line was terrible, man. Oh, no, so still, but like he took a lot of sacks. We I, we, I, I we, know, I, I we know, talked like, about it on the show a lot that he was the cause of, of a lot of those sacks. But last year it wasn't. Last year he was just getting his ass right. kicked up. Last right. year just pure awful. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that was happening. But even then, he was still makes plays, man, because he, he reads the field so well. He sees the field so well. He gets rid of the ball so quick. Um, you know, he 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 knows where to go to the ball. So if he got to check it down, he's got to check it down. If he's got to throw it downfield. He's got to throw it downfield. He's got to get out of the pocket and make a play. He's gonna make a play. Yeah, it's crazy throw against Texans, man. That was just just ridiculous. It was just a, it was just nuts throw um, against the Texans, man. He rolling out to his right. He was rolling out to his left, and he threw it across his body. I didn't even know he had the arm strength to make that throw, but he made it. You know what I mean? Like, and, and he just has so many great plays on film. It's just you know, sometimes he can't take up take some sacks, and I think, uh, but when he's in rhythm, he is just. Like it's lights out if he's in rhythm. If, if if you if he can hit that back of his drop, and he can throw that football, it's going to be all the money. He's he's he throws the, probably the best back shoulder in football. Um, yeah, it, it's just so much. Is that, to is that just because he's been working with Chase for like? Eight no, I mean years now. I mean, T Higgins too, man. He throws it to T Higgins, but I mean he's been working with them for like. I mean he's. I, 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 what, what do you want me to say to that? He, he's he's a hard worker and works with his receivers. He's supposed to do that, Chris. No, I know he's supposed to do that, but like it, when you got a guy that you've been throwing the ball to for eight years, like <laughs> that's not something that happens. You don't you don't get that kind of longevity with your with your wide receivers. Yeah, that's true, man. But like, I, I still think he does, he's still accurate with it. I mean, he still he still got to hit it no matter how they work on it. He's got to sure. be able to hit it. Sure. Him. Sure. Put it at that spot, and I I think he's really special with that, you know, because it, it is it's hard to find too many flaws with him. Like you know, like like I said, you could talk about maybe arm strength a little bit, or you know, you could nitpick a little bit. But I I you know, it, it's one of those things where he's just he's a stud, bro. There's really nothing else I can say about it. Like he's just he, he does his thing every week in week out. He do, he does get his slow starts. Like you watch him like week two or something, it's kind of ugly. Mm-hmm. But like when you when you get like when you watch the Niners game, it's like <laughs> dude, it's just. He tore that defense up, you know, and that's one of the best defenses in the league. He just was picking them apart, bro. So, yeah, he's he's uh when he's on, and it's past week eight. Watch out! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, man, and he, and he's the only guy who's beat. Mah- I mean, he didn't beat Mahomes that year, but he's the only guy that as you know that kind of rivals him at sure. this point, right? Even though I think CJ Stroud might get there. To ride with Mahomes, um, but you know Burrow is the only guy that technically, I mean, even though in my opinion he didn't really beat him that game. <laughs> it was, you know what I mean? He, he, he didn't do anything. He was just, you know, <laughs> to be fair. But you know, he he does give Mahomes with problems. He has Mahomes respect. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Joey B, he, he's a stud, dude. He's a stud. All right, three, all right, three, three is Josh Allen. Josh Allen's at three. Josh Allen's at three. I know. I know you. Chris, I don't know. I don't know which problem is Josh Allen, Chris. I, I, I do. It's it. Can a can a coordinator wrangle him? He's had one guy that has figured out how to keep him successful in the NFL. The second that that man left to be a head coach, we saw the same thing we used to see. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna say that too much. I. I, I think that you know he, he's a little bit. He's a wild man. He's a little bit of a wild man, but you know it, it's it's and he's gonna turn the ball over, and he's gonna do a lot of those things. But I think he makes up for it with the touchdowns, right? He's still gonna throw a lot of touchdowns. He's gonna produce a lot. Is he uh, though? Is he gonna do yeah. that this year? Who's he throwing to? A rookie wide receiver? I mean, we're they, gonna find out. Are they got rid. They got rid of. Uh, <laughs> we'll see, Chris. <laughs> they got. They got rid of uh, Knox. No, Knox still there, isn't he? No, no, no they're. I thought well, Knox. Knox is I think Knox is still there. They love Kincaid. I think I think Knox is gone because they'd have to pay him. I don't think Knox is there anymore. I think that they that he's gone this offseason. <sighs> yeah, I, 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 I was wondering that too. I was wondering. I mean, what they're doing is like Josh, you got this. So we'll see if Josh got. They this. are doing a Josh, you got this. And you know what? I I totally expect that completion percentage to plummet the way that it that it 
has always been. I've always hated his accuracy. I've always yeah. hated it. He yeah. turns the ball over way too much, and he takes way too many. Like, he's the most inaccurate Ben Roethlisberger I've ever seen in my entire life. See, the thing is, though, Chris, if he is on, you can't You're right. Him. You're right. If he is on. You can't but, stop Mark, him. Doesn't he's matter. not, he's not no on. He's not on consistently enough. I mean, he, this, he's on this enough. Only, this is the only one in your top in your top ten that I'm going to fight you on. This is the one that I'm going to fight you on. I don't. I. I it's just because to me, when he is on, he can't be stopped. You can't stop him. What are you going to do? You can stop him throwing. No, he's going to run. If you if you stop him from running, he's going to throw. If you he should, is I on, think, you can't stop him. There's no plan. I think teams this year are going to are not going to let him run. They're going to make him stay back there, and he's not accurate enough. And he's got too many young guys that he's throwing to. I, if you keep him contained and back there tr- just trying to throw the ball, yeah, is he going to get some? He's going to get some. He's just – that that arm strength is just oh, he's, he's incredible. He's doing well too, Chris. He's, he, it's not like he doesn't see the field well. Yeah, I, I, I'm he's not saying that he doesn't see the field. He just – he, Does all those things you really yeah, like. He, and he's got – he tr- that man trusts his arm – more than probably any other quarterback in the NFL. Like the only one, the only one that probably trusts his arm almost as much might be Will Levis. <laughs> which, 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 which he shouldn't. Which he, he shouldn't. He should not. He should not. He's got a cannon and he doesn't know how to use it. Like Josh Allen's got a cannon. He knows how to use it, but he's still wildly inaccurate. Yeah, yeah, he's a wild man. But but I, I also think there's a lot of benefits to him. I, I think he's he's obviously he's a big time leader, right? He's intangibles, all those things. I, I think he, he still is going to lead them to the playoffs. I think the Bills are going to win that division because they're still going to play really good defense. And you know, because there's no what the uh, Tua is going to make the mistakes for him. Well, Tua can't beat them. Tua cannot beat them. He can't beat them. So like, if Tua can't beat the, the Bills, I mean, the, the Bills like beat them like forty six to fifteen like every time in Miami. Like, in it, Miami, they like it, they it, always it, lose the the Dolphins in Buffalo, never in Miami. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like, uh, yeah, he just sits, and you know, I mean, unless Aaron Rodgers beats him, which I mean, that that's that is a possibility. I mean, Aaron Rodgers in that defense. I mean, I, I think mm. that I mean they're gonna be they're gonna have a chance to sneak in with the Bills, but um, yeah, I do think the Bills are gonna take a step back as a team though. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Agree with that. I definitely I don't know. agree with that. I think. I think he will. He'll be a part of that step back. That defense got old. They couldn't afford to keep it together. Um, they made yeah, a lot of changes on the, defense, on, on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, high, high, high still a free agent. I, I was yeah. all right because I think they need some depth of safety. Both safeties are gone, aren't they? Yeah, Jordan Porter's gone too. Yeah. So that that entire team is going to regress, and it really. For me, it's it depends on that relationship with his offensive coordinator. If his offensive coordinator can keep him wrangled and can keep him to make the smart decision, then maybe we'll see him stay on a straight line. But mm, this is this is the one in your top ten that I will disagree with you. Where, where, where do you think he should be? You think he should be outside? I, I said of his name. I, no, I, he's still a top ten guy. Still a top okay. ten guy. But I mean, I was saying his name when you were saying nine. <laughs> Not, not, it's not to be as disrespectful, Josh. I think that's disrespectful. Okay, fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's Flip fine, him Chris. with Aaron Rodgers then. All right, all right, all right. Seven. Uh, all right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So number two is Lamar oh. Jackson. Now, I almost put Lamar at one. I'm not going to lie to you, Chris. Well, you, did that, you doing that because of potential, because of Derek Henry in that backfield. I thought about it a lot because I thought he had he had some really good film throwing the football this past year. I thought he looked really good. Really MVP, he's off. the reigning MVP. Yeah, yeah, I thought he looked really good in that offense. I thought he played really well. Um, and, you know, just, you know, because I, I think he's, he's always been underrated in the pocket a little bit. I thought he yes, uh, really showed that last year. And, of course, um, he didn't run as much last year. Um, I mean, he still, he, but he still had that ability. Um, oh, yeah. I, I do think that, you know, uh, when they got to the playoffs, I, I do think that they got a little cocky. That was with insane, the, the decision-making in the playoffs. Insane. They got cocky with it. Insane. They did, because they stopped, they stopped running the football. Yeah, didn't they run the ball like nine times that game? That was. I think so it was. Uh, I think it was six. <laughs> Gus <laughs> Edwards. Gus Edwards had three carries, and I think. Why do you, why do you I, think had, I think he had ten yards a rush. And he only had three. He, he was averaging ten yards a carry, and he, he only had three or four touches. 
Yeah, because because the, the reason and I, I'm gonna talk about Patrick because Patrick Holmes is one. I'm gonna talk about these guys together. I'm, I'm gonna end the show this way because I'm gonna talk about these guys together. Okay, so I almost put him over Patrick Mahomes. I thought his film was better than Patrick Mahomes last year. I thought Mahomes his film took a step back. All right, is it because and, of the personnel around him? Yeah. Okay. And, and, right to the personnel behind him. I think his film took a step back. And that you know the, the Raiders game is the perfect example. Um, it, and it's it still like he was like hesitant, like he was hesitant to like, you know, to to read like what exactly the guys were doing. If it wasn't Travis Kelsey, like he was hesitant to like trust these guys, trusting your receivers and things like that. So I felt like his film took a step back, but then he got to the playoffs and his film just went right back to normal. So that was the difference. Yeah. Between guys, right. Like it, it, it looked like he's in the regular season. Mahomes was like he just wasn't himself. Right. And, and that's why I felt like the Raiders could beat them during the season, because because one, I feel like he is more reserved than he ever was. Patrick Holmes. Right? Could not agree with you more. And I, I feel like Lamar Jackson was more steady, uh, more comfortable, kept the drives going, did a lot of better things than Mahomes did. Because, I mean, the offense still ranked high and like all these little nerdy metrics. But I still think that that offense took a step back last year, the Chiefs offense. And we'll see how they go. But it's just when Mahomes got to the playoffs. And even then, I still think that, you know, they, they didn't dominate the Ravens on offense. I mean, they didn't score a point in the whole second half. No, they didn't. Game, right? But the Ravens decided that they wanted to, you know, not use the – The best part of their offense? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and Mahomes – well, he not the best the part of the offense, but and, and Mahomes tore up the Bills. Like the, the that's that's the he just dissected them, right? And he just kind of went off and just looked like Patrick Mahomes, how he always has in that game. And in the Super Bowl, I, I, he didn't have a good first half of the second half. He looked like Patrick Mahomes, like he did his whole career. So, it, you know, Patrick Mahomes is just more of at this point. He's more of he's just the best quarterback in football. And yeah, he might not have the guys around him, but if you get him in the playoffs. That's still that guy. He's still he's that gonna, dude. That's when he's gonna turn it up, and that's when he's, he's gonna show he's the difference between him and the other guys. So I think if you just win regular season, I probably Lamar's probably won. Right? If you just win regular season, but if you have to add in the playoffs, then yeah, that, that dude is he is uh number one, right? And mm-hmm. and I think he just turns it up and he like he and the thing that pisses me off, and, and you know, that's why I hate Justin Herbert, but you know, I like Patrick Holmes because you know he just he just verifies how great the show is because who had him QB one, Chris. Who had I did. did. He still he still terrorizes me with his interceptions and and the should have been interceptions. Just absolutely terrorizes me. Who had him cute? Everybody's making jokes. He can't do it. He can't do it. And now everybody wants a quarterback like that. But and now that's now you guys are trying to draft Zach Wilson to (laughs) to make up for it because you made a mistake because you couldn't see it because I saw him at ASU once. Man, I remember I watched that Texas Tech game. And they and uh what's uh that one dude uh Caleb Balaj Caleb Balaj had like eight yeah. touchdowns eight touchdowns yeah. game, right? Yeah. And and uh he was balling with I, I can't name any of those Texas Tech guys. I have no idea who those guys are, but he was balling and keeping that team in that game the whole time. And issue defense was not that bad. I don't care what they say. Their defense was not that bad there. He was tearing them up. And I've been a I've been a fan of his. I can't even really say that anymore. But <laughs> I've been a fan of his ever since, and I and, and people ask me like, "What are you? What is your worst sports moments?" One of my worst sports moments is when the Chiefs traded up and drafted Patrick Mahomes. It's one of my worst sports moments for me being in that draft and watching the trade up, and then it's the Chiefs <laughs> hearing that noise, and the Chiefs are trade up to ten, and then the, and then Goodell walking up to the ten podium and be like, "Patrick Mahomes." I I just couldn't. Uh, it's still it, it makes me sick because it was the per- perfect place for him to go to all mm-hmm. those things. But I, mm-hmm. I thought Lamar's film was better throughout the season. And and what happens with Lamar is and, and I'm going to tell you what, what happens with the playoffs with Lamar because Lamar does not like to check down. He's not, he just doesn't. He's a big play guy. He, and, Always he's so and, and the thing is, with a lot of these big play guys is they don't have the pocket presence that Lamar Jackson has. Lamar Correct. Jackson can't be he doesn't take sacks because his pocket presence is like if if we're ranking by pocket presence like it's him patrick mahomes you know those guys absolutely his pocket presence is crazy Mm -hmm. so he has a feel in the pocket that these other guys don't have and that's why he doesn't take sacks being a playmaker right um 
you know, because Justin Fields is a playmaker, like, you know, like Lamar, but he has no pocket presence. So he's going to get sacked. You know what I mean? So Lamar is not going to take a sack. He's going to be able to, he's going to be able to feel that guy coming. He's going to be able to dodge it. He's going to be able to, there's two guys coming to be able to dodge it and then run for 20. And he's not going to be able to, he doesn't take sacks like that. He's a fumble like that. But what teams do in the playoffs is they just drop back and they play cover two and they're like, check it down. You're not going to throw deep. You have to check it out. He doesn't like doing that. And he just he runs around for five minutes. Yeah, he doesn't like doing it. He doesn't. The Bills did it to him a couple years ago when the Bills beat him. Uh, when he went to uh, he beat the Titans that one year, and he ended up playing the Bills in the second round. The Bills didn't play cover two. You're like, you're not gonna throw deep. So what are you gonna do? And he just he just is, like he just has a, his brain just malfunctions, and he doesn't. Just you got to take what the defense gives you sometimes. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't do that. And when you get to the playoffs, and teams are the, you're playing the better teams in the league, and they're gonna do that you to you. Gotta do it. Yeah, because he, he if he was meticulous against the Chiefs, he'd they win that game to go Super Bowl. Yeah. But he wasn't. And he was still trying to throw down fields and stuff like that. And the Chiefs, Chiefs were like, you aren't going to do that today. You are going to go down the field throwing the ball. Or you're going to run the ball, which they did. They were like, they, they should have. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. It was completely and utterly mismanaged. They There's no reason for them to lose that game. There was no reason. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but, that, but that's why I have Mahomes over him. Because I just Makes think sense. Mahomes – Mahomes is, is is a playoff guy now. The Chiefs get yeah. to playoffs so that we all should be worried. Uh, the, the, to me, it, it doesn't matter how he plays in the regular season. Yeah, it doesn't matter what their record is. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> he's agree. he's in the playoffs. He he's going to turn it up. It's 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 not it's not going to be the same guys you saw for seventeen games. He's going to be a co- completely different quarterback because he he was tearing up the Bills with with MVS. <laughs> right, and he just. Mr. Dropped the ball in the worst timing. I see that. I see that in my sleep, dude. I see that in my sleep. Yeah, and, and he was tearing up the bills with that guy. So he turns it up when he needs to turn it up, and I, I think that's uh, his dynamic, and that's why he is the number one quarterback in the league. Because at this point, it, it, it's and you know people got mad when the players didn't vote on that, but I think you know, the players they vote pretty early on that, and it, it, it did. The office took a step back, and he so did he. But the playoffs started. Mm-hmm. And then he, he went right back. Mm-hmm. He took the step forward. <laughs> right? That's really what happened, man. And 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 then, you know, teams, that, when they play him, that, you could tell they're scared of him because that's why they, they won't run the ball because they're scared. But, like, that's the that's, – that's how teams beat Peyton Manning, guys. You run the damn ball. I don't we'll get see, it. We'll see if it comes back this year. The running game should start coming back. Derrick Henry being in Baltimore – uh, they're going to hand the ball to him a lot, especially yeah, good, especially in the playoffs. Especially, in the playoffs. If, especially. if he's falling off, if he's falling off, I don't know, man. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, All right. there we go. So that's it, guys. We got it. That's, your that's our list. Uh, that's our list. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, uh, like I said, I like the love that we're getting uh, from here. You got a lot of love. People are liking the show, Chris. So I really appreciate that. So we're wait till the season start. starts. Wait till the wait season till starts. The season start, guys. It's gonna be even better. So yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, joining us uh, for the show. Like I said, uh, what is it? A L P A underscore QB one on Twitter. Also on the same thing on Instagram. Little Pocket Awareness on Facebook. Subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on this channel. TDL. Uh, go to Spotify. Spotify. Google Play. We appreciate all the love you guys are giving us uh, with this uh, our move to video. This is our first year doing video, so first yeah. year video. <laughs> so I like it. I got, I got the fresh cut, Marcus. Uh, yeah, ready, I got. I got to get a haircut. I'm gonna haircut this weekend, man. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be look better next week. I'm, I'm gonna be on your level next week, Chris. I'm getting a haircut this weekend, so finally get one. All right, uh, all right, here, guys. Peace. <laughs>